I have a letter from someone. This is a viewer, and his name is Matt. Matt Bugby. And I'm going to hey, read this. And he had an interaction with his city after filming uh, the library that's being constructed in his town. So I'm going to play his video while I read his letter. And he's got some things right in there, um, but there's something crucial that we have to address, and that will come up in this letter. So I'll just start his uh, video here, which is pretty good. And he's been documenting this library. He says, hey, Ken, I've been posting monthly aerial videos of a new library being built in Connecticut, my town. I post them on my small YouTube page and then post them on the town's local patch for the townspeople to view and see what's going on beyond the fence. I do this to gain experience in flying, photography, and editing videos, and I enjoy it. I've attached a link here so that you can uh, see this uh, that I got from my town. Mr. Bugby, three out of 12 of your YouTube videos show you crashing your drone. Your library videos show you flying over pedestrians' heads and cars. Is your drone registered with the FAA? Do you have an FAA commercial pilot's license? Do you have a town permit for each of your library videos? If yes to any of the above, please post here for confirmation. Thank you. Now, this was from the city. And then he said, wow. I replied, my crash videos are with a race drone in my own backyard, and it's three out of 30 videos that are crash videos. I do not fly over crowds of people or directly over pedestrians, even though I am allowed to fly over cars and people with a sub 250 gram drone. And that is not true. Uh, all my flights over the library are after the workers go home, which is smart. Yes, I have a commercial FAA UAV license. I am flying in Class G airspace, so I don't need the town's permission to fly anywhere in town. I do the library videos with no compensation for the town's residents who are interested in seeing the progress of the build. Thank you for your concern, Matt. And then he got a reply, says, Mr. Bugby, please post your FAA commercial license ID here Stop it. for confirmation. Dang. Yeah, your oh, YouTube. He, he got carded. He got carded. Yeah. He did? <coughs> This is from the town. It says, your YouTube videos indicate you are flying FPV and out of line of sight in violation of FAA rules and regulations. He replied, "What? A oh, I only have to show you my UAV license to the proper authorities, the same as you only have to show your driver's license to proper authorities. When I fly FPV, I always have a visual observer with me. All my drones are registered with the FAA. I hope this satisfies your concerns. Matt, it's very polite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, I thought it was well worded. And then <coughs> the final reply from the city was that they've posted a link to the FA report illegal drone activity. What a the bunch FAA of FAA doesn't have time to handle the library videos. I hate to break it to you. They're a little busy. Right. There, there's a couple of things in there. One, yeah. Um, he says that you can fly over people in cars and everything with a sub two fifty drone. No. Um, uh, please listen to me and listen. I say this all the time. The the whole 249 grams, 250 and below is a marketing ploy. It's a genius marketing. Genius. Absolutely genius because people think that since you don't have to register those light drones with the FAA, that means that you have carte blanche. You can do whatever you want with them. Every single drone, no matter what the weight is beholden to FAA rules and regulations, even yes. the wonderful mini. And I hear people saying this all the time. I get emails from people like if I if I send them eyeballs or mm -hmm. I you know I put lights on my mini once and they say doesn't that put it over two hundred fifty grams? Well, yeah. And what do I care? Yeah, it, it's because yeah. just register all of your drones. Yes, it, it's not well, a magic and, and, and drone. To, yeah, register all your drones, anyways. And and it sounded like his is registered. Yes. If you are doing it in a Part 107 operation or manner, it needs to be registered, regardless of what it weighs anyway. So, yeah, Ken, you said it very well. Just because it's under 250 doesn't mean it's the outlaw drone, as you famously called it many years ago when it first came out. That's that's not the case. It, it um, to, to go back to Matt's video I feel like he's doing the city a favor. Like, hey, you're, you know, I feel like libraries are probably on the decline anyways as we, right. as we move up in the technology age. You should be thankful that someone's interested in your library. And I love books. <laughs> I just get them all on Amazon, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like they should be quite happy that someone is 
showcase in their library for them. I didn't see anything illegal in the video, by the way. You can, he didn't fly over any pedestrians, and not that I saw or anything along those lines. He just misspoke in his letter to you. So it was right. very and, clear on that. And the city, the the city saw him land crash landing his FPV drones, and they clearly don't know the difference between Whoa. FPV drones because that's how you land them. What yeah. city employee is spending enough time on on a on a is it a kid a kid's YouTube no, channel he, watching his crash videos and everything else? Um, counting them, seems, right? Counting his crash yeah. videos, like th those are tax dollars via <laughs> payroll getting spent to watch YouTube. I thought they had like firewalls and stuff at city, you know, on city browsers. I don't you know. Couldn't go on YouTube. But there's a couple things I want to reiterate, and you said something that's very important that people don't realize, maybe. If you're a Part 107 certified pilot and you have a Sub 250 drone, you still need to register it. Yes. Uh, that that's that's important. And uh, again, there. Yet, yeah, Tater, are you saying something? It sounds like your audio is messed up. If you could. Yeah, I was saying that that's uh, the same thing that you were just talking about. I had no idea. I thought 249 was, you know, hey, you don't have to do all this stuff. I mean, I know you have to go register with the FAA, but this is very educational. Oh, yeah. The only thing that having a sub 250, please to do something with your audio, uh, uh, Tater, uh, like turn your mic down or something. Uh, the only thing that a sub 250 drone gets you is an extra five dollars in your pocket. If you're a hobbyist, if you're part 107, it matters not. You know, I, I register everything no matter what. What if I have a flyaway and maybe there's an honest citizen that wants to find me and return that to me like. Just register everything. I know it's five dollars, but it, it, you're not being tracked or anything creepy like that. Just register your silly drone. It's just the easiest way to do well, it. Well, I remember when I registered, uh, they did send me a hypodermic needle so I could uh, inject the nanobots so they could track me. But other than that, it's really no, not that's, intrusive. That, at that's all. normal. That's yeah, that's yeah, normal. Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I hope that I hope that helps you, uh, Matt Bugby. There was something else in there that he did mention. And maybe you can clarify, Jason, with the, the latest version of, of the FAA UAV rules, you can, um, and I, what's the wording, when you fly over traffic, non-sustained or something? Yeah, it's unsustained flight. If, if, as long as I'm not hovering, like there's, wow, there's a really good Rotax uh, Mazda over there. I'm just going to creepily hover over it. Mm. I can't do that. But if I'm crossing over a road and conveniently someone goes under as I'm crossing over, that's, that's, I'm not, I'm not purposefully hovering over the road. I'm, it's just in transit, unsustained okay. flight is the word. Because up until they said that, I would actually wait for the car for breaking the traffic right. before crossing the road because like a little kid we'll yeah look both ways you look both, then, yeah. but yeah so but you don't have to do that anymore but tracking cars going with the traffic don't do that and also mm. flying over people i think it's the same you can uh, un, non-sustained flight over people as well not crowds but like right. if you're flying across a parking lot somebody's walking to their car exactly right so and and this is another reason why uh, you should Go to remotepilot101.com. Was literally, I literally just filmed four new videos today, always updating because a good pilot's always learning. Yes. And you're a good pilot, both of you guys. Oh, well, thank you. Tell us about, tell us about remotepilot101.com as we go and, and see you there. Look, here's the website. Sure, look at that guy. Wow, I, I was more muscly back then. I don't know what happened to me. I got to <laughs> get back on the Ken Heron diet or something. Uh, remotepilot101, uh, also m0a.com. It's one and the same thing. Uh, we are actually the largest Part 107 test prep provider. We are doing some market research the other day. We've done about 60% of the Part 107 certificates have gone through and used us to prep for the test. So pass your test or we'll pay for it. Uh, and the best marketing pitch is, we got Ken Heron to pass and Tater to pass. <laughs> I mean, that is true. It, that, that's marketing right there. That's good. That's just good marketing right there. Yeah, that that is good. Now, and speaking of uh, of marketing, there it is right there. Use Heron eighteen, and you can get thirty percent off your sign up fee. It's good for life. And uh, he he's updating videos all the time, like he just did. Mm -hmm. Four of them today. And uh, would you say that the the FAA uses trick questions on the test 
I know for a fact, sir, as a, as a teacher of it all, uh, I know for a fact they use trick questions. They love it. Actually, some of the videos today uh, I was doing was kind of sharing what are some of those trick questions. It's funny because they make me teach things um, like flying fixed wing drones. I know most of us are flying quadcopters, but they make us still learn about aerodynamic stalls and flying fixed wing drones. You may say, I don't fly fixed wing drones. You can still be quizzed on it. What does a forward center of gravity mean in a fixed wing drone versus an aft center of gravity? Like those, you may never fly one, but you need to know that sort of stuff. Actually, the the really great video I did today because it applies to everybody is on performance, right? It's summertime, it's hot. I heard you saying earlier, Ken, how hot it is. We are getting a decrease in drone performance because of something called density altitude. It's hot, the air molecules are spread apart or there's humidity, so there's water in there as well. Those, those propeller blades, those rotor blades, aren't getting creating the same amount of lift they do on a cool day. So you're getting a decrease in performance. But people are asking, why is my battery life worse in the summer? Wouldn't it be worse in the winter when it's colder? It's not necessarily true, depending on where you're flying, if it's in a hot, humid place like, like Tennessee. That's true, and, right and FPV pilots in particular will, will notice uh, less efficiency um, in the summer when you're trying to make quick turns and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I, I like flying in the, in the fall and winter. Because yeah. you can you really grab that dense air. Now, um, uh, Tater, if you're trying to talk, you think you turned your microphone down a little too far. Okay, can you hear me now? There you go. I can hear you now. Sounds Did you want to say something? I was just going to say that uh, the the motors probably have to work a little bit harder, too, when the air is so dense. So the motor is going to have to put putting out a little more than normal. That's right. Mm -hmm. Your motors can heat up and they use more battery. More now, battery. I want to get back to uh, just very quickly remotepilot101.com. Um, I was very intimidated. The most intimidating part for me was the sectional charts. If you look oh, at yeah. one of these things and you're like, <laughs> you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa wait, wait, what? Um, it, it, it's really intimidating. All that. There's so many words and numbers and good God. But uh, mm -hmm. you really, you really break it down in your, uh, in your videos how you Appreciate can that. i can read this now i really can i never thought i would be able to do it but i mean and and that's canada i mean my goodness you must be that, a real professional is that canada in, oh no we're in canadian we sectional charts let's, yeah, no, let's, wow, let's, Ken, i'm uh, proud of you yeah is it diff is it different <laughs> are, are canadian uh no, sectionals? They're, 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 yeah no, i think it's international different, so let's uh it. where let's you down here in florida where the hell is ocala north north is it north 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 of disney there you go it's the up, blue yeah the blue dot there there you go up in here somewhere yeah, up in there. That's close okay, enough. Okay, all right. But that's, yeah. that's, that's Mickey's house, but that's close enough. <laughs> okay, but <laughs> all this stuff here, it's it looks like it's a mess. It just looks like it looks like yeah. digital vomit. You know, mm. it's like what in the hell is this algebra? But uh, really, <laughs> it boggled my mind because I my brain doesn't work that way. I'm not a math right. guy, but for me to be able to figure that out, yeah, and retain it, yeah. Yeah, when I was in ROTC back in the eighties, we would be the we were getting tested with a Weems plotter and a flight computer. And so we were reading those and we'd have a lot of test questions on that and had to do everything the old fashioned way. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> the old way we still have our giant flight computer. We still go old school sometimes. And sometimes you got to. And for 149 bucks for life. Oh yeah, man. Hey, you well, can't beat that. Man, they change you, rules. You you can beat it. You can use Heron 18 and get 30% off of that. 30% off. And I, I say this every time. That is our most used promo code out of all the promo codes. I mean, people actually listen to Ken. Wow. Hey. Oh, come on. Um, it's your education up there now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Carbon, <laughs> Carbon Cage FPV says the sectional chart looks like my mom's makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Poor mom. Poor mom. Yeah. Poor mom is right. Oh my goodness. Um, by the way, this, what we're looking at here, this is a great resource. It's skyvector.com. Yeah. Good people. Yeah. If you want to be apps, I mean, people, what people ask me all the time, should, should they use an app? Um, I would say, do not use the FAA's before you fly oh, app. It's oh. garbage. It, it, uh, yeah. there was not enough money in the budget to make it. It's uh, geared towards right. hobbyists too, honestly. It's so limited. And I mean, the FAA has tried a lot of things. I mean, Buzzy the drone, I mean, he was kind of cool for a bit. Do you remember Buzzy? Oh, Buzzy. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I even said something to the, the uh, they haven't asked me back to any more meetings. <laughs> no? <laughs> no. I don't get any more invites because I did Ouch. say, I said, Buzzy, really? Mm. 
<laughs> they're like, let's check yeah, off. Buzz Kim no more. Yeah, I'm out of that yeah, one. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, they're. I mean, they're trying. You know what? Yeah. What can they do? They're uh, a regulatory agency. Yeah, yeah. You only you only get so much budget, right? You got to do yeah. what you got to do. You know, it'll be interesting to see, Ken. We've seen a spike in our manned aviation. So we do private pilot all the way to you want to be an airline pilot as well, ground train, just like you did for Part 107. We've seen a spike in demand since Top Gun 2, and uh, yeah. Uh, correlating a little bit on the drone space as well. Like maybe, maybe Halloween costume, Ken, you know, you want to be Maverick? You want to be Goose? I don't know who you want to be, but maybe we could, we could tag I'm, team uh, I'm too, a Halloween. I'm too tall to be Maverick. Yeah. <laughs> Tom right. Cruise is that's a shorty, right. but. Don't make me bust out my flight jacket. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm telling um, you. Right but, here in the closet. But if, yeah. you know, uh, Jason's right. If, if you are already part 107 certified, um, how much more time do you have to invest to become a man pilot while I show your um, YouTube sure. channel? This is M0A's YouTube channel, and you guys live yeah. stream on here as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So we're, uh, can you pass us on subscribers, by the way? I'm only like 160-something, oh. so. Uh, but we do <laughs> we do all our uh, all our manned aviation videos there uh, as well on m 0 so be sure to throw that subscribe as well if you're interested in that. And seriously, you are about... I don't know, 20 hours of knowledge away from going on to pass and become a private pilot. It is literally like private pilot light, earn your part 107. So uh, I do have a great book called The Private Pilot Blueprint. It's everything I wish someone would have told me before I started my flight training. And that's a great place to start. And you can check all and, that and out. And here's something that people may not realize, and that is you don't have to buy a plane. You can become a man pilot and uh, rent planes. You you rent, you can join a club, uh, yep. and there's all types of clubs, equity clubs, where you own a tenth of it, like a timeshare in a way, but the plane stays in one spot, you schedule it. Uh, there's non-equity clubs where you just pay a membership, like a freedom boat club kind of thing. Uh, yep. it, it, there's so many great ways uh, to not only become a pilot, but really live that dream and actually fly places, go see the kids, go do whatever, take tater tot flying, whatever that may be.